I was filing for a divorce on Monday. It was Saturday. I just took an Uber. I show up and lo and behold, Javier had come to spend the night. At this point, it was laughable and I knew what she was capable of. So I video recorded before I even entered the house, smart. Monday, I filed for divorce. Tuesday, I appear in court for my initial hearing. The revenge. Over the four years we had dated, been married, we had accumulated quite a large collection of fun toys. Somewhere in the ballpark of $3,000 to $4,000. And most of it was kept in a big trunk that looked like a magician's case. Cheater loses her privileges. Hmm. I've been waiting a while to remember a good petty revenge. Read a post. Finally remembered one. Compliments of all the breakup divorce stories recently. Backstory. My ex-wife was a special kind of lady with that almost unbelievable type of crazy you only see in the movies. There was a matching crazy sex drive with it too, though. I had caught her cheating multiple times over a few years we were married, as well as doing some pretty hard substance drugs while I traveled for work, and she stayed at home to watch her two kids from a previous marriage and our child. I chose to believe the aisle changed stuff too many times foolishly, mostly because her older two were like my own. Their father had passed from cancer while they were still young, and also because she had my my child and I didn't want her growing up in a broken home like I did. Opportunity presented itself for a fresh start with a relocation far away from the rat hole she grew up in with all her connections and bad habits of her past. We agreed to move the family there to take a nice promotion and give her a chance to get an in a new environment and work towards change. The act. Fast forward a year and much is still the same as it was. She had taken up redoing furniture to try and sell it instead of getting a real job, which meant spending a lot of time making runs to a local store that resold and the donated innards of houses that were being remodeled. There she met, let's call him Javier. She even introduced me to him on one of the visits as the helpful associate who always helps her load up the heaviest stuff she bought into her truck. Needless to say, my slimy sense was tingling. At this point, I had this gut feeling every time she found someone new she was going to eventually cheat on me with. She was mid-30s and to get old and undesirable. So she would pick out guys about 10 years younger so she could still think she had it. Javier fit the bill and also oddly looked similar to her deceased husband. Roll forward another three months and the arguing was getting too much for me. She also started insinuating that she would lie to CPS that I was touching her children so I would never see my daughter again or purposely inflicting harm on herself and threatened to say it was me. By this time, I was smart enough to start secretly video recording this stuff with my phone so I could avoid major issues down the road, smart. It ultimately saved me and won me full custody in the divorce, but that's for another time. A week later, we fought just prior to Thanksgiving. Not only one of my favorite holidays, but we were all completely alone in terms of family except each other. She started the fight as a way to go spend it with Javier's family. I wasn't aware anything had started on that front yet. Her oldest kids were accustomed to these crazy acts by now, and she didn't fear them telling me. My daughter was only two. Mm -hmm. These two older kids that you adore so much and treat them as your own, look how they didn't tell you anything. A couple days later, I found out after spending a lonesome Thanksgiving with my hungry man turkey dinner. What really happened? 
The fight was huge. I was done and she knew she had gone too far. I was filing for a divorce on Monday. It was Saturday. She was able to take one of my texts I sent after she pulled over on a four lane busy road with our youngest so she could kick me out and walk four miles home and convince a police officer to arrest me to get me out of the house for the night. Our city has 24 seven judges and I was out by noon on Sunday on $100 bail as it was a nothing charge. He thought I was gone till Monday at minimum. I just took an Uber. I show up and lo and behold, Javier had come to spend the night. At this point, it was laughable and I knew what she was capable of. So I video recorded before I even entered the house, smart. He left, then I left as the kids had school coming Monday. Monday, I filed for divorce. Tuesday, I appear in court for my initial hearing for the arrest over the weekend. Requested a temporary restraining order on me at the, at the hearing and the courts granted until the real trial. I was forced out of my home and also forced to keep paying all the bills except food while the divorce went on, lawyer's advice. I was given six hours on Wednesday by the court to get as much of my stuff out of the house as I could. I was leaving that same day for a multi-week out of town job too, so I couldn't really take a lot. Anything I left behind, I was at risk of never getting again. Now I definitely needed work clothes and some street clothes, but I could maybe only take two to three suitcases of things at best. Cue the petty revenge. The revenge. Over the four years we had dated, been married, we had accumulated quite a large collection of fun adult toys, somewhere in the ballpark of $3,000 to $4,000, and most of it was kept in a big trunk that looked like a magician's case. Well, that stuff was mine just as much as it was hers. I had bought it all for her, and she loved this stuff, with, with or without others' involvement. She kept her favorites hidden in different places through like her closet inside a shoe rack. It was strange. I packed what I really wanted in about an hour and a half. Spent the next two hours searching for all her hidden favorites. I cleaned that place out of anything explicit and tossed it all in the large trunk. I left with time to spare in the bed of my truck loaded with my work gear, some suitcases and her special trunk. I drove about five hours to get to the hotel of the job I was going on. And after I checked in, I saw the big green dumpster back in the corner. I pulled my truck around, backed up, and hoisted the 80-pound monster into the bin and smiled. It wasn't a lot, but it felt really good to have gotten at least one leg up on her, as I knew she would be furious to not have anything to help her distress from her life about to be falling apart. Also, edit I want to add, the case was eventually dropped against me when she wrote a letter to the DA stating I was fine and she wasn't afraid of me. That's the only way they'd drop it so she could get, get my help with the kids as she struggled to find work. I wasn't going to violate that TRO for any reason. I ultimately won full custody of my daughter as well when, I, when all was said and done. I have so many more stories from the terrible marriage, from this terrible marriage if you guys like the above. And he has an update on this, a part two, guys. Let's get into it. The Cheating Wife Part Two, A Family Affair. Firstly, a huge thanks to everyone who showed support for and enjoyed my last post. I've been asked to write some more of the crazy things that happened in my marriage. This one is another tale that involves some pretty petty revenge, so I'll keep this one here before writing others in the subs they belong in. Let me preface this story with the fact that I know I was dumb and stayed too long. About six months prior to moving away from my promotion September 2018 with the family, my ex-wife had gotten pretty bad from a delusion standpoint with the whole seeing ghosts demons she was supposedly scared to be at home alone with the kids my job at the time required for me to be gone for periods from a week up to several months at a time and that could have been alleviated some if she would have gotten a job to contribute financially but she refused to take a low-paying job after having her nursing license revoked by the state 
I should have been more vocal, but I wasn't. I was paid well, and up to this point, to my knowledge, she had been faithful. She was raising three kids at home and used her free time during the day to work on rehab projects for the little house we had bought. One day, I came back from a job in the spring of 2018, and her cousin by marriage, no blood relation, let's call him John, was there. She gave me a quick summary of them growing up together, how he'd had come to help her haul something back from the hardware store, etc. The guy seemed all right, but she seemed overly nervous about him while he was playing it totally cool. This is also the first time she ever introduced me to one of her targets, by the way. Mm. Either way, he hung out about 15 minutes to not have it be weird, excused himself, and left. I didn't see or hear about him again for several months. He apparently secretly stopped by quite often when she was feeling extra exorcist-ish. To jump back a bit further and explain where the angel demon paranoia came from, my ex had birthed our daughter in late 2016, and by spring 2017, she was not happy with the weight she had gained and also was suffering from some mild postpartum. This led to her falling back into her drug use, meth. Oh, here we go with meth again. Jumped back on that drug to quickly lose weight. I had known about her previous pill addictions, but not about the harder stuff until after I caught her with it late that spring. A huge fight ensued. She promised to quit and go to N.A. Most of the rest of 2017 was her continually slipping into the use of pills or meth in a prolonged manic episode. It finally got to the point that I was ready to leave if things didn't change, and everything settled down around Christmas 2017, and was actually pretty solid through the mid-2018s. I think her manic episode chilled out around that Christmas. Back to summer 2018, though. John was popping up a lot in our daily conversations out of nowhere. He was coming over and helping do a, little, a lot of physical labor, working on the house with my ex at least once during the week and almost every weekend, always when I was gone for jobs. Mm -hmm. He never was around when I was home. Strange. Eventually, I caught them together, and the blame for it was directed at me because I was always gone and never around to help. Mind you what I said about the finances. If she worked even a crappy job, I could have afforded to be home another two to three months out of the year. And funnily enough, John turned out to be unemployed too, so they had all the time in the world to play happy couple while I worked 80 plus hours a week on the road about 40 to 44 weeks a year. It was boiling furious. I filed for divorce for the first time and she flipped out, begged and pleaded, said it was done and over and how sorry she was. This is what led in part to us moving away from the for the promotion and getting a fresh start in the fall of 2018. Wow. So that's what happened. That's why you guys ended up moving, but she never changed. And we heard that story, but uh, let's keep going with this backstory. This is interesting. The act by summer of next year, 2019, her phone was constantly blowing up with text messages from someone. And she had them in her phone as Jennifer and Jacob <laughs> names changed. She said her aunt back home was very ill, and that was another cousin that was keeping her updated on her condition that ended up being a lie. Now, she wasn't tech savvy in the slightest, and when she changed iPhones, she had me back hers up on the family computer and move everything over to the new one. The text kept coming, and I eventually had enough suspicion that you that used the program to pull the backup open and dump her text history. As I read through, I discovered that Jennifer and Jacob was really just Jacob, and there weren't any talks of her aunt going on at all. What there was, though, was a ton of flirting going on, dirty pics and videos flying back and forth. I confronted her on the findings after processing it all for about a week. I was heartbroken to find out that nothing had changed. Of course, I was the bad guy for not trusting her and breaking her privacy by reading the messages. She filled me in on who he really was, which was John's adopted brother who lived a few hours away. She didn't have she didn't have an explanation this time as to why she did it, 
but she claimed to have went to see him at some point and tried to hook up. But apparently he wasn't able to perform that night. Oh, oh, that's why you didn't do it. Okay, gotcha. So they never managed to go all the way. My new job was in a manager's position running a division at my company, and I was home every night. She would say she was going somewhere for a couple of days and needed a break from the responsibilities of a full-time stay-at-home mom. Usually, it was to a family member's place, which all lived a minimum of three hours away, depending which direction you went. At this point, I didn't know when it would finally be over, but I knew it was coming. The only reason I didn't fold right then was the financial position we were in. We had overextended ourselves on the new home we purchased based on the idea that she would become gainfully employed after we moved, which never happened. We were living paycheck to paycheck on a mid 100k salary. All the credit cards were maxed out and I couldn't figure out a way to escape without bankruptcy, the route I ended up having to take. There was so much else going on in terms of drama and arguing that this was just another blip on the radar. I was mentally defeated up until the events happened from the previous post. Those events, for anyone who didn't go read there first, triggered me filing for divorce. The Revenge Early into 2020, the divorce was going about how one would expect dealing with a spouse like this one. Atrociously. I was broken down and looking back at how much of a joke I had let myself become. One night, deep in those thoughts, in about a half of a fifth of Crown Royal, I wondered what this other guy's life was like. I looked him up. He had a family, two kids, beautiful wife, perfect looking from the outside on Facebook. Jacob's wife looked like a genuinely sweet and caring person. I got it got me wondering if she knew what had happened or if he or if he skated by without a scratch. Jennifer didn't have a Facebook, but she did have an Instagram. I sent her a message that gently explained what I had discovered several months prior. I wasn't sure she'd ever respond when she did. It was even more sad that she said she had known my ex and had suspicions, but could never prove it and wished I had told her sooner. She then told me she also knew that my ex and John were dating because my ex and I had gotten a divorce, which was categorically untrue. But she said that but she said that's what John told her. And lastly, Jennifer said that Jacob did this sort of thing a lot, but always stopped short of hooking up. My guess is guilt D stopped him? No clue. Jennifer wanted some proof so she could believe what I was saying and also as evidence in her soon-to-be divorce. I had gathered up the exported text videos and pics and sent them over to her. I warned her the text messages would hurt her a lot more than the, than the, other, than the other stuff. After reading, she agreed I apologized, but also said at least she knew the truth before she wasted too much time on him. We never spoke again after that. Within a week, Jacob apparently got my number from my ex and he started blowing me up with text messages. He said I played my hand well and congratulations. His marriage was over and all he had to blame for it was himself. I largely ignored him other than to say he should have respected what he had and not also contributed to destroying the life I had. I blocked him after that. I wasn't out to destroy his life but rather to make his wife aware of the circle of scum we both trapped in and let her handle it how she wished. It was a somber victory, but a victory nonetheless. There's a lot more to John's story with my ex that I haven't covered due to not being relevant to the reading of this one. Wow. Uh, you definitely put your, you definitely put up with a lot of crap, man. You put up with a lot of crap, you know, uh, the ultimate revenge, the ultimate payback for you would be to level up on your own, do your thing. It saddens me when I read your first post, you said, oh, it'd be hard. I think you were saying it would be hard to divorce or you wanted to forgive. You wanted to forgive because 
Well, her two children, they love you. Their father passed away and they look at you like a father. But look how they treated you. They knew they knew what mommy was doing and they didn't tell you anything. They don't look at you like a father. I think they do. Yeah, when you buy them things, when it's time to take care of them, oh, you're the best. You're my father. Let you say no or anything. And they'll, they'll tell you the truth. You're not my dad. Tick them off. You're not my dad. You're not my real dad. Guys, look. I was raised with a stepfather, right? So it's hard for me to say stepfathers are like just horrible and stupid and they all get treated like crap. My stepfather, my stepfather didn't get treated like crap. My mom didn't treat him like crap. We didn't treat him like crap. In, but I, I think that's very, very rare. I That's very, very rare. So that being said, and as close as me and my stepfather is, we talk every day. And, and even with that being said, I still would not recommend someone getting with someone with children. It's just not worth it. It's not worth it. You're going to have all that love for them and they're and more, more than likely they're not going to have a lot of love for you. They're just not. Do you put up with a lot from her? And in your first post, you know, you put this under petty revenge. Yeah, you threw away her toys, whatever. They cost so much money. You paid for those toys though. Or I don't know, maybe she paid for them, but she loved her toys or whatever and you threw them all away. You know, she might be a little upset with that, but man, this woman is going to go smoke some meth and go bang somebody else and go find another sucker to do this to. At the end of the day, I'm happy you divorced her. I'm happy you got out of there. You should have did it a long time ago. Guys, let me know what you think about this story. Let me catch you guys at the next one. Strange relations for 15 years since we were 15. Married, now divorcing. Affair is a coffin now. Me, 30-year-old male, and my soon-to-be ex-wife, 30-year-old female, both are from a relatively small town in a small Slavic country. The one that made headlines back in 2020 and again in 2022. It all started in 2005. We went to school together and we were never actually considered a couple, but rather sweethearts based on the bond that existed between us back in those days. Her daddy issues date back to this very period as well. Long story short, dad made huge debts and disappeared. Single mom left behind two kids, mobsters coming and searching for missing dad literally every day. Oh, wow. Guess this is where the trauma comes from. I will elaborate on the trauma and its impact below. We went to university together in 2009, same uni, different departments, and I was hoping to convert this bond into a full-fledged relationship. This is the point where it all started to go wrong. We have been on and off since that year, had some two to three days of wild sex, and then got split again for some eight to 12 months. Theory of attraction could have explained a lot back in the day, but ironically enough, I discovered it three weeks ago. This is where I could have taken a different route if I only knew. This all lasted till 2014. We both had relations with other people in between our brief rendezvous, but eventually got drifted towards each other at the end of each cycle. 2014 was the year when it all began officially. She reached out to me, persuaded me that she did some soul searching and was ready to give it a go. It took me almost a year to trust her completely, and eventually it worked. We split twice in 2016 and 2017 for some four to five weeks, but never ceased communication. She was asking for a separation once. I slammed the door the second time. We both just got emotional, nothing really serious, although this might have signaled future issues. This is where I could have taken a different route if I only knew. Moved in together in 2017. Got married in 2019, right after we moved into our first flat. 2019 was the year when I got sick, low-grade fever for six plus months and other symptoms. This was the point where her libido started to gradually fade away. As she later confessed, 
Not that easy to have sex with a sick man, but we were still in love. Remember, I mentioned trauma. She was really struggling with some issues, including chronic depression, eating disorder, separation issues. She has been seeing therapists on a regular basis since 2017, has been taking SSRIs ever since. And as it often happens, she is extremely gifted. Applied arts, design, etc. But never actually believing in herself. I was always there, as she herself confessed. Made some minor mistakes, but never let her down and was extremely supporting. As the pandemic started in 2020, we both admitted we grew extremely closer despite spending almost 100% of the time together in a small flat. Her depression and eating disorder almost went into a remission and we couldn't be happier. Spent lots of time together inside and outside, dream job, I am a game producer, and love of my life next to me, with pandemic raging somewhere. Purchased and moved into our new flat in 2021, renovated it together, had some minor, semi-friendly arguments, but nothing serious. End of 2021, beginning of 2022, is the time when I felt something was starting to go wrong. First, the gut feeling. Then sex becomes rare. Still not a dead bedroom, though. She is drifting further emotionally. She starts to display major signs of uncertainty whether we are headed in, in the right direction as a couple, etc. Eventually, I dug into my books and pushed myself to start working on this thing seriously while she was trying to figure out what was going on in her head. In March 2022, she was asking for some time alone in a city in a country located nearby, some one-hour flight, and I willingly agree and purchase tickets for her. When she is back, it was never the same. Disengagement, absence of physical contact, etc. We still talk though, discuss things and try to approach things differently. April 2022, she was asking for a brief separation. One month to do some soul searching in the same city as before. I purchased tickets, wow. She assures me she is willing to work and was asking me to find a family counselor while she is away. Messages me every day, though I'm trying to stay pretty much distanced to give her time with herself. Yeah. D-Day is here. I felt something was wrong from the first day she was there. You know, liars are often exposed when they made up an excessive amount of details for their stories. This is why I felt something was wrong. I accidentally ran across the profile of her ex from probably 2012 Instagram recommended section, which was quite surprising per se because we shared a good laugh when the guy semi-unemployed pseudo-intellectual wannabe musician reached out to her in 2015 while we were already in serious relations. I did a brief search across the digital footprint and guess what? She is staying with him while texting me and assuring she is working on herself. I messaged her today telling I am aware of this. She immediately denounces our marriage and says she wants a divorce as soon as she's back. I do not object. And here I go, sitting in the flat we built together, full of stuff we shared together and grieving. Moving out to my friend's flat tomorrow since I don't want to spend any more time in our home. Obviously, I'm willing to fix this, but at the same time, it is pretty much obvious that the damage is done far beyond repairable. Time to move on, I guess. You are a hero to have tolerated this. Any advice or support is appreciated. I am at the beginning of scraping the past 15 years and putting all this crap together from the very beginning. I don't care how long you've known the girl, y'all were in grade school together, and you went to prom together, and you went to college together, and shared your first kiss, and no, especially in those situations, she's going to want to go experience some things, and you too, You're, you can't tell me that if this was your first and your only, you can't tell me that you didn't consider, am I doing the right thing getting in this relationship? I'm pretty sure. So it's just a bad idea. Um, and it's just so better. Just focus on yourself, guys. You go buy a flat yourself and fix it up. You know, if you want a female friend, you got a girlfriend or whatever, that's fine. She come over and help you if she wants to. 
but like that's yours you know and let's do your own thing have your own stuff because you get things together with people right and then all of a sudden she's flying out of town banging some other guy and saying now i want a divorce now you got to go through this long bullcrap process of splitting everything and losing the house that you you got and oh, it's just it's too much it's too much it's not worth it it's not glad there's no kids involved in this situation oh man and i know you even said it i had a feeling she was doing something over in that town i had a gut feeling but you bought her tickets again <laughs> I'm just going to go to this other city and do some soul searching while I'm out. You go ahead and find us a counselor. I'm going to go and get my back blown. I mean, I'm going to go and clear my head. Okay. Come on, sir, sir. Come on. I'm glad you're going through with the divorce and scared me a little bit when you said you want to fight for the marriage, but you know, it's over. So that just tells me. If she's like, I'm so sorry, please forgive me. I don't know what I was thinking. You would say, okay, let's fix this. And I can tell you right now, she'll just do it again. Let's check out the comments. Why would you want to fix this? <laughs> First thing, it's been 15 years of disaster. You would be foolish to fix it. You need physical and emotional distance more than anything. Your soon-to-be ex-wife is a broken human being who refuses to properly resolve her trauma. Instead, she's choosing to traumatize you. Here's OP. It is a desire, not the intention. I am, I am on no account going to even make an attempt to reach out to her or something. Good. I like hearing that, sir. Even now, in the state of despair, this obviously doesn't even look like something fixable. I do have an intent to start healing and putting my life back together as soon as possible. But yeah, it's not even wishful thinking. Hey man, I'm sorry. She doesn't love you. That sucks, but you're going to be okay. You have a friend that's willing to put you up and I'm sure other blessings. 15 years is a long time, but it's never a waste. Time never is. It makes you who you are and crafts your future responses. Keep cool though. The divorce. Don't get mad or desperate. Don't try to make it work with her. You will only hurt more. You got this. You can do this. Why are you leaving your home? You don't leave. You make it yours. Put up the color and decorations you like. You take out any of her furniture and pictures. Change the sheets. Use this as a stepping stone to move on. Here's OP. It probably would be sold and the assets we get from it might be split according to civil law of our country. I'm going to offer her a buyout to keep the flat. She's gone. It sucks to throw away 15 years, but you need to make a clean break. And here's OP. Oh, heck yeah. Gotta be ready for this and not fall into this trap before ever again. Enough is enough. Thanks for pointing this out. Well, I'm glad he's thinking like this, you know? So... You scared me a little bit in the story, but you you're you're more than willing to breaking up and divorcing and moving on with your life. And the most important thing, focusing on yourself and becoming a better person. So I say salute to you, sir. Salute to you guys. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. I'll catch you guys at the next one.